to say, how would you like to depreciate the value of this asset? Why? Because there are so many reasons for it. They are used or they don't worth as much because you have consumed so many of that. There are so many reasons. So therefore, you need to depreciate the net value from the asset that impacts your government documents for taxation for property tax. Government charges them less for the property tax. Or the bank doesn't take those assets as serious as they should, in other words, when they want to analyze the financial strength of the company prior to issuing the loan. This theoretical subject matter is important in order to understand exactly why do we have the fixed asset and how do we set it up properly. Sometimes you renovate your asset, therefore you need to basically add value to it increase it like for example if there is a building you may want to perhaps repaint it or maybe redecorate it that would be asset addition certain assets however they are being governed by a specific authority to say no you must depreciate it a specific way so then you have no other choice for that type of an asset only go with whatever the government asks you to depreciate they don't give you a choice when they give you a choice Needless to say, you could indeed change the depreciation profiles based on your depreciation calendar. Some companies may do that, which we're going to get into the details of it as I start the demonstration. However, certain assets you cannot depreciate at all, depending on the law, like land or perhaps an old bottle of a scotch or art, maybe painting. Those type of things you're not supposed to depreciate or you don't want to depreciate. So you need to say, should it calculate the depreciation or not? There are so many reasons for it because some assets, the older they get, the more expensive they become. Having said that, we're going through that introduction. Now let's see how do we really manage fixed assets. Within my legal entity, SRHQ, I'd like to show you how to set things up before we carry forward into the system. First thing I'd like to do is start with the fixed asset management workspace. And as a matter of fact, right from here, you don't see any information whatsoever. But the reason I brought it in, because later in advanced courses, you may want to get acquainted with Power BI and literally connect your Power BI into this dashboard in order to analyze the data in your legal entity, not only in fixed asset management, but for most workspaces in order to have a captivative report to the business analyst. There are advanced courses that allow you to hook this up to Dynamics and gather the data. And of course, dealing with the Power BI is a separate course on its own. But as you notice, I don't have anything. As a matter of fact, right off of here, I don't have any fixed asset in order to take a look at the valuation of it or books or details of it. We come back to this later. But right from here, you can start by going through all fixed assets. And that was very similar to directly go to the menu option, going through all fixed assets by clicking on this menu item which gives you this a specific form. So let's just start by creation of a brand new asset. As you notice, the fixed asset group is rather mandatory. If I basically click somewhere else, you notice that the fixed asset group is mandatory option. Since I don't have anything, I now demonstrate that it's required to have a fixed asset group first before you have an asset. I right click view detail, and for my demonstration, I'm just going to create one group, but imagine you could have multiple groups, like group of computers, maybe lands, vehicles, you name it. For this, since we probably continue with the distribution trade series of training, I assume that these are my machine, that's a fixed asset group, and that would be for CNC, Computer Numeric Controller for SRHQ. We need to, let's say, buy a CNC machine. The type of an asset are usually tangible. That means you can feel and touch it. But intangible assets are those assets that are non-tangible, in other words, such as patents, intellectual properties, ideas. Financial is obvious, like bonds or money in the bank, etc. And then land and buildings, obviously. It tells you what it is. 